Let's look at the alkali metals of group one. They are so reactive that they are never found uncombined in nature. Pure samples have to be stored under oil or gas so they won't react and form compounds with air or water. One general dot structure and one electron configuration can be written to describe any of the alkali metals. Remember, the elements in group one lose one electron to form cations. M stands for any alkali metal and N is the number of the highest occupied energy level. They all react with water to form a metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Lithium reacts steadily with water. See the bubbles of hydrogen gas. Sodium reacts more violently. Notice the orange flame. Potassium ignites on contact with a violet flame. Looking at rubidium below potassium on the table, we would expect it to react even more violently, and it does. Like the alkali metals, group two metals are reactive. Alkaline earth metals react readily with oxygen in the air to form a dull white oxide coating. Calcium is very hard and impossible to cut with a knife. Both barium and strontium are softer than calcium, but are still not easy to cut. Magnesium metal burns with a bright white light and is often used in flares. Group two elements react with water to form hydroxides and hydrogen gas, but much more slowly than the alkali metals. Magnesium reacts very slowly unless steam is used. Calcium is faster. Barium, which has the lowest ionization energy of the three, reacts more vigorously. Salts of the alkaline earth metals also emit strongly when heated in a flame. They are commonly used in fireworks displays. All of the alkaline earth metals are harder than the corresponding alkali metals. This also makes the alkaline earth metals melt and boil at much higher temperatures than the alkali metals.